There's only a few items in this world that I'm 100% satisfied with, and this is one of them. Do you spend way too much time editing your videos? Well, I have the solution for you. What's up guys, welcome to the channel. If you clicked on this video, then you're likely no stranger to the grind of video editing and how time consuming it can be. Sounds exhausting. Today, we're gonna be diving deep into two essential tools that have cut my editing time in half. We'll talk specs, features, and even take a peek into my own setup. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly if these tools are right for you. And spoiler alert, they are. You're welcome. But just so you know, I was a skeptic at first since there was nothing wrong with my current flow of editing, and I typically stick with what works. I basically lived by the keyboard shortcuts and my trackpad. But I am always looking for ways to speed up my editing, and after doing a ton of research and seeing other creators rave about these tools, I caved and I had to try them out for myself. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first tool that I want to talk about is the Logitech MX Master 3S. This bad boy right here. I thought this thing was going to take me forever to get used to, but I was wrong. It's basically the Rolls Royce of a mouse. I would be lost without this thing. You're my best friend. So let's go ahead and break this bad boy down. First off, let me talk about how comfortable this mouse is. It's got that premium solid feel to it and its ergonomic design contours to the natural shape of your hand, kind of like it's been waiting its whole life to meet you. It's weighted, which gives you a stable and planted feel and the textured rubber grip provides even more stability and control, especially for those tedious projects. Its thoughtful design and thumb groove and raised palm rest distributes the weight of your hand evenly for long-term comfort. It also has a small indent on the side for your pinky finger. It's basically a lazy boy for your hand. It just like molds to your hand perfectly. Like I could do anything with it and it just, it, it's like it stays. Because it has a built-in dark filled sensor, it can be used on any surface like glass, for example, which can be great if you're editing on the go. The main scroll wheel has a grippy feel and mag speed electromagnetic scrolling, which is precise enough to stop on a pixel and quick enough to scroll a thousand lines per second. The side scroll spins smoothly and has a weighted feel to it with a nice tactile feedback. And it's probably one of my favorite features on this mouse. When it comes to the noise or lack thereof, Logitech claims the MX Master 3S is 90% quieter than other mouses. The primary click buttons are really quiet and the scroll wheel is virtually silent. And despite its quiet nature, both offer deeply satisfying haptic feedback. It's like every click is whispering, yes, you're in control, but without it getting weird. It's weird, isn't it? Shouldn't have done it. So it comes with a program that has presets for various apps, but if you don't like the presets, you can customize each button to whatever works best for you. It's fully customizable in almost every app within the program. I tried following other creator setups, but nothing felt quite right for me. So I played around and experimented until I found the perfect setup. The most important function for me is the ability to scroll in and out of my timeline, since this is the action that I perform the most with cutting, moving clips around, adding sound effects, blending clips, all the things. My favorite part about the trackpad was the fact that you could easily pinch to zoom in and out of your timeline with such ease. So when I first got my hands on this mouse, I was really excited to use the scroll wheel for this particular function, only to find out that it's a no-go. For some reason, you can't set the scroll wheel to zoom in and out of your timeline, and I'm not really sure why. So instead, I decided to program these two buttons on the left where my thumb sits as my zoom in and out. And let me tell you, it is even better than using the trackpad. So at the time, I didn't really think too much of it, but after using the mouse, it was a struggle when you would zoom in and out too much and then you'd be lost and having to waste precious time trying to figure out where you were on the timeline. I am lost and I was found. But with using these two buttons, zooming is so much more controlled and precise. It zooms in and out based on where your playhead is and I get the perfect amount of zoom every time without having to move my hand or even thinking about it. I mean, my thumb is pretty much already touching these buttons already. So after getting the zooming down, I moved on to the next necessity for me, which was scrolling left and right through my timeline. The option that made the most sense to me was the thumb scroll wheel, since you already use this with a left and right scroll motion anyways. It's very controlled and won't let you really lose your place by accidentally scrolling too far. My thumb fully navigates my timeline, so I don't have to lift a finger, figuratively and literally. This setup alone is like the holy grail and pretty much sold me on the mouse. It's the most fluid and intuitive navigation that I've ever used. Moving on to the other buttons, this top button right here below my index finger is what I use to cut the clip. It'll cut anywhere the playhead is and instantly reverts back to the select tool. You can 
actually press the scroll wheel down, which will allow you to program this as a button as well. The gesture button, which is where your thumb is right here, you can customize it to perform a variety of tasks, such as switching between applications, opening the start menu, or launching specific programs. This mouse is Bluetooth with USB-C charging and can last up to 70 days on one full charge. If you can only charge it for about one minute, you can at least get a good three hours out of it. And then there's Flow. You can seamlessly control multiple computers by simply moving your cursor to the edge of the screen and you can transfer images, text, files from one computer to another by copying on one machine and paste them on the other. The MX Master 3S instantly pairs with up to three devices, which you can easily control on the back of the mouse. Just slide the button on the back and it will automatically sync your settings that you set up for that specific computer. It's compatible with all major operating systems, which allows you to even flow between Windows and Mac OS. This mouse is currently $99 on their website, worth every penny. I believe the website also has a 15% off code for first time buyers, and you can also try to get it cheaper on Amazon. You've got three color options, black, graphite, and pale gray, which is what I have, and it's more like an off-white in my opinion. I spend hours every day editing videos, so the comfort of this mouse is everything. But it's more than just comfort. It's versatile and customized so you can create a workflow that works perfectly for you. The MX Master 3S has literally cut my editing time in half. I'm extremely picky and there's only a few items in this world that I'm 100% satisfied with and this is one of them. So let's shift gears and talk about the second essential device in my setup. Meet the Torvox Elite. Oh yeah. This is a one-handed controller engineered to streamline and elevate your control over video, photo, and audio editing. Think of it as a keyboard substitute that's hyper focused on editing tasks. There's a Neo and an Elite version. And the main difference is that the Elite, which is this one right here, is Bluetooth, while the Neo requires a USB-C connection to work. The toolbox is compatible with virtually any editing software on Mac OS or Windows. It comes in three color options, ivory white, classic black, and smoke black translucent. This one was the hardest for me to get on board with at first. I think because I knew that I would have to get used to all new shortcuts, and I knew it would be a bit of a learning curve, and it was, but it was worth it. So the game plan is to have your right hand on the mouse and your left hand sits on the tour box. The dynamic duo means your hands virtually never need to leave their stations. Now you could go full tour box if you wanted, but let's be real. I would never ditch this magnificent thing. It's been way too good to me. The tour box features a total of 11 buttons and three knobs. You've got your scroll wheel, two physical dials, and four primary buttons. It also has four directional buttons and a trio of smaller secondary buttons. Buttons, buttons, buttons. The setup process for this is just as straightforward as the mouse. Just download the software and choose a preset for the specific apps that you want to use it with. Then you can customize it to fit your needs by simply pressing or selecting the button or dial and choosing the command that you want to assign it. You have a preset list on the left side of the panel that stores all of your presets. It has several preset templates or you can create new presets by clicking the plus button in the upper corner and name it whatever you'd like. This is great for multiple users or if you have several programs you use it for. And if you turn on the auto switch right here, it will automatically switch to your preset when you open the different programs. And if you're feeling fancy, the Tor menu plugin lets you create your very own tool panel. The Tor box supports a plethora of command options from single click, double click, combinations, and more. The knobs even press as buttons, which also can be assigned a function. You can also set up macro commands to execute multiple tasks with a single click. The ultimate goal is hands-on autopilot, so you'll never have to glance down at your keyboard again. It takes a bit of trial and error to find that perfect setup, but once you do, you'll be editing like a pro. Trust me. Once you've set up your tour box to your liking, you'll never want to edit again without it. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into how mine is set up. Now I used mine for Final Cut Pro, but you can use this same setup for any of the editing platforms if you want. This bottom right button where your thumb naturally sits, I use this as my space bar, which basically plays and pauses my timeline. If you double click it, it's set to fast forward through the timeline, which is the L shortcut on the keyboard. The button on the left of that is my select and delete and you have two buttons right above it. I have the left one set as cut and the right one set as blade all, which basically cuts all of your clips on that playhead. So I have that awesome dynamic trio right here where you cut all and then right below it, select and delete and then press play to keep on moving. It's my own little editing trifecta. This far top button in the middle is my marker tool and I use it to place any markers if I need them in my timeline. And then the scroll wheel on the left side zooms in and out of my timeline at my desired speed based on the amount of pressure that I use. And 
honestly, I use both the mouse and the tour box for this. I don't know why, they both work great. It just depends on what kind of edit you're doing, I guess. The button on the left side of the box is gonna be my undo button. It's an easy reach for my pinky. So whenever I need to undo something, I just slide that pinky over and click away. The little button to the left of the middle knob is gonna be my redo button. Now the bottom left scroll wheel was already set to this feature and I kind of like it. It scrolls left and right on the timeline by 10 frames. And then the middle knob is also my left and right navigation for the timeline, but only one frame at a time, which is great for more precise edits. So if you're trying to line up audio or a sound effect, I use this one so that way I can get it right on cue. I also I also use these knobs to adjust the brightness, contrast, and saturation of my videos. It is a little bit expensive, but I got mine on eBay and saved a little bit of money. So you might want to try other platforms to see if there's any savings you can get. I hate that it took me so long to jump on board with these two, but I'm able to save a ton of time and get my videos edited faster and more efficiently now. I used to think that keyboard shortcuts were the best way to edit, but between the mouse and the tour box, my mind is blown. These tools have been absolutely essential to my editing process and I'm hooked. My advice is to pick a video to edit and force yourself to use it through the entire video. Just stick with it and you'll start to notice that you get faster and faster with each edit. Still don't like it by then? You're out of your mind, do you know that? I'd say it took me about two videos till I started using it fluidly without even thinking about it. I honestly can't imagine going back to the keyboard. You don't realize it, but you waste a lot of time having to look down at your keyboard and making sure that you're pressing the right buttons. And then if you press the wrong button, you gotta figure out how to undo it. It's just, trust me, use the dang thing. I'm always looking for ways to cut my video editing time down. So if you have any suggestions for me to try, let me know below and I'll be happy to try them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh crap, oh God. Into, into the, <laughs> the, the hail. It's just, it, you don't think.